I know so many people that the most irrational, small things they will let consume and dominate their life. And it's paralyzing. And what are you missing out on? What goodness are you missing out on? Because you're paralyzed by what if? What if it doesn't work out? What if I look foolish? What if I fail? What if people don't like my haircut? What if people don't like the shoes I wear? What if people don't like the car I drive? What's going on? What's going on? It is the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh. Got my son Logan over here on the other side of the studio. What's up, son? What up? Man, it's good to see you. Good to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you much lately. No? You're pickleballing a lot. It's kind yeah. of a new thing, huh? Yeah. Pickleballing. Yeah. So Logan's at work. It's really awesome. I see him. He comes here in the dungeon, locks himself in here, just does his thing, does his work. Then he leaves work and he goes to the retirement community <laughs> and plays pickleball with a bunch of 90 year old men and women. And I think, I think, what's your record? You're two and nine versus the 80 year old division female, right? Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Okay. No, I don't play with old people. My friends and me just like started randomly playing. Why are you against old people? Let's talk about that real quick. What do you have against old people? Mommy would I don't be have curious. anything against old people. As an older generation, Mommy might want to hear a clarification on why. I don't uh, have anything against the older generation. I just do not participate with them as they are um, better than us. Oh, good answer. Good answer. So of your friends who pickleball, now this is a group of friends you used to play golf with a lot. Yep. And pickleball seems to be the activity of choice right now. Yeah, I feel really weird and old like because we're like all 18 and 19 and we're playing old people sports. Yeah, to the so point that you've you've purchased equipment. I've bought a paddle. Mm. I mean, you kind of have to to play, right? I, I don't know anything about it. I mean, it's like so anything I wouldn't else. Know. I, I wouldn't know um, anything about pickleball. It's yeah. on a tiny tennis court, right? Yeah, sure. What? Is it not? Yeah, kinda. Is the net the same height as a tennis net? No. Lower? Yep. And you pay with a wiffle ball? Kind of. So no matter how hard you hit it, it doesn't really go anywhere fast. Yeah, it does go fast. It's a wiffle ball. Not as fast as a tennis ball, but it does go fast. If it went as fast as a tennis ball, you wouldn't have any time to react. Because you're on you? a tiny tennis court. Kind of. There's a line in front of the net. It's called a kitchen. You can't stand in it if the ball's in the air. You can't stand in the kitchen? Nope. That sounds sexist. All right. So you're, what we've determined in the first two minutes of the podcast, you're kind of ageist and sexist. I mean, according to you. <laughs> take it as you will. All right. Well, I'm happy for you. All right. Pickle what ball. do you do what, what you, besides work? Uh, not a lot. Okay. Not a lot. Gotcha. I mean, I drive around with your mom. I hang out with your mom. Gotcha. Yeah, that's funny. That actually sounds like <laughs> I should, <laughs> should. What do you do outside of work? I'd be like your mom. Like it would have been like a weird joke. You, but. you what? <laughs> uh, nothing. Right. Nothing. We'll just we'll let that slide. Yeah. I mean, you pickleball. I you. work. I work. Yeah. Watch stupid shows in the background. Yeah. While I do work, if football's on. I put football on in the background while I work. There's always something to do, man. Yeah. There's always something to do. Maybe I should. Maybe maybe one day I'll come play pickleball. Yeah. Maybe. You don't think I can? I don't think you will. Do you, don't, okay. I show up for pickleball. What are the odds my team wins? You're not winning. Bro, you've seen me on the tennis court. I'm yeah, a beast. Yeah, I've seen you play tennis. Yeah, right. What's the difference? You put me on a smaller court? Yeah, because tennis is more, like, you can hit it like, it's more about, I don't know, I don't really play tennis, but you have to be more <laughs> Clearly. like agile in uh, pickleball. Man, I'm like a cat. A yeah. large cat. Like, yeah, like a like a, lion. What do they call them? A Tamascan? Those are the big cats. Not a cat guy. Well, yeah, me either. I don't really know. <laughs> Let's jump in. How's right, that? Cool. Right, good catching up. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so look, guys, what I want to talk about today, it's a weird time. It's a weird, weird time out there. And if you're paying attention, like I don't watch the news. I don't know what's going on. Apparently, like there's a war over in like Israel and Hamas and 
all that stuff. I mean, that's a serious thing. I mean, that that sucks. War sucks of any kind. Russia and Ukraine are still getting into it, apparently. And Ukraine's asking for money and credit and all that cool stuff. And, you know, things are expensive. Shit's expensive. And, you know, people are paying more attention to spending, hopefully, you know, what they're doing with their money and stuff. But if you are, you know, a small business out here, it's an interesting time. There's lots of people having a tough time. Things are different. They're struggling. And, you know, things that they've always done that were successful uh, in the in years past aren't necessarily working now. And they keep doing the same thing. And they're wondering why the same shit isn't producing the same results. And it's like, guys, things things change in 2021. I mean, you know, when when that that weird cold was going around, there was so much money inserted into the economy. People were just getting money left and right. People were spending money left and right. Businesses were being pumped flush full of cash. And it's really interesting in the last year or so to see a lot of these gurus, a lot of these internet entrepreneurs just disappear and fall off because they're just, they were fake. They were frauds. And all this money they were getting from, you know, EIDL and PPP loans and all this crap, they were presenting this persona and this lifestyle that wasn't actually supported by anything they built. It was supported by free government money, you know, or loans that are at some point going to have to be paid back. And so, but in that money that was being injected in the economy, people did what they had hoped they would do and they would spend it. Even though that money for the businesses was there to help support the business during what should have been or promoted as like a slower time, businesses had to shut down for a while and all that stuff so that the government's going to inject this capital into the markets. This can help sustain payrolls, keep people on payroll to continue to to operate and order inventory because inventory was sparse in a lot of segments and all these things. So all this money just being injected, but this money's also getting spent. And so, you know, families are getting money and credits and all this crap going on. And then they're getting a couple thousand dollars because they got, you know, two kids and you're getting $10,000 because you got three and a half kids and you got chicken and a goat. And so you're getting $4,500. I mean, there were just crazy reasons people are giving out money for really like two years. Well, all that free money stopped. Well, in many, many, many businesses in 2020 and 2021. So you got all this money going on, you know, coming into the markets, people's households, their spending and businesses are flush. They're doing really, really well. They're growing like crazy. Life is good. People are starting a business. They're blowing up. And, you know, businesses that have been around for a while, you know, maybe they're doing better than they've ever done. And all that's great. Then middle of last year starts up. Rates are changing. Interest rates are going up. Prices of things are going up. Um, the, the free money being injected into the market dries up and stops. No more EIDL for businesses. No more, you know, certain credits you're getting as a family, as a household or employee. And so all these things are drying up. Costs of things are getting more expensive. Gas got super expensive. Everything was getting expensive. Milk was expensive. Your normal daily items were getting pretty expensive. Soda's expensive. Like normal shit is getting expensive. But the money that was extra money coming in slowed down or stopped altogether. And so business like, man, my stuff's slowing down. What am I supposed to do? You know, I'm not getting as many clients. I'm not getting as many leads. I'm not getting whatever. It's like, okay. And so, and we've talked about this before. What are you doing differently though to reach your audience? audience. And are you doing everything that you should have been doing? And we were, we had an owner's meeting for Off Leash a couple months ago. And, you know, one of the things there's, there's a bunch of people in the room, great, great group of people, incredible, incredible business owners, incredible dog trainers. And we're, and we're all together. And some people are like, man, this just isn't working for me anymore. Pay-per-click isn't working for me anymore. All the, It's not that these things or pay-per-click cost is getting worse. And people are seeing this across the board, every industry. It, it's not that it's not working. It's just changing. It's just changing. And if your business was built solely on pay-per-click, I don't care what industry you're in, you're going to be struggling. You're going to be hurting. You're going to be having problems because that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable. You're dependent upon people searching for what you do. And we've talked about pay-per-click on here and in social media marketing, how it is important and doing it right is important. It's something we do every day and we've done for 10 years and we will continue to do it because I believe we do it right. But we also do a ton of other things as well. We're super super active on social media, putting information out in front of people. We're super active in our communities, whether it's volunteering time, money, resources, equipment, being visible, doing our training out and about in different areas. Like we're visible. People know our brands because our brands are all over. You know, social media, very big on this podcast. You know, I believe that, you know, there, if, if I can help one person an episode, it's worth it to me. But a counterpiece of doing the podcast also is we're putting eyes and ears on 
us on our brand. We're capturing attention. And so it's another thing that we can be doing to garner that attention. And and one of the big things I think about is like when you first had this dream, you first had this idea for your business and the life that you wanted to build. What did you do then that you're not doing now? Are you hustling as hard today in day 10 for us, right? We're in, we're in day 10. We're in year 10. I'm sorry. You know, and I've been thinking about like, what am I not doing that I was doing then that if I was doing that, that would help us grow from where we are right now. And while business is good, it, it can always be better. There's plenty of people out there that, that need our services and need our help. And, you know, I don't care how many trains that we, how many dogs that we train and we help. I always know that there's more dogs out there that need our help. And so we need to continue to grow our teams and, and develop outstanding dog trainers and handlers. Um, our boarding and daycare, we need to continue to increase that experience for people, you know, and, and those dogs and make sure we have a great staff, which we do have a tremendous staff over there. Um, but we're equipped to handle all the dogs that need help with daycare and boarding. And it's a safe, healthy, fun place for their dogs to be. But, you know, our media business, the marketing company, the sales side that we have, you know, all these different things. What While we've expanded into different brands, am I still hustling as hard as I was 10 years ago? And and I, I would honestly say, yes, I truly honestly believe I am hustling probably harder today than I was 10 years ago. It's, it's different now. And we have an amazing team with a lot of the things I was doing 10 years ago. They're better at doing those things than than I am. So they, they do those things today so that I can do other things. My point of all this is shit is getting harder though. People are getting tighter with their wallets. They're not wanting to spend and invest in certain areas and things. So what are you doing to to adapt? What are you doing to grow? What are you doing to stay in front of people's eyes and ears and gain that attention? Because if you're just sitting back waiting for the phone to ring, I don't care what business you're in right now, that's just not the world that we're in right now, guys. And you have to be capturing attention. You have to be building your profile publicly of who, your brand, what you're about, who you serve, why you're the expert, and build. And if you're not doing that, you're just waiting for someone to call you to come, you know, with their plumbing problem. Like, okay. And let me tell you this right now, if you're in home services, if you actually answer the phone or you show up on time for an appointment or you do a job on the time that you had it scheduled originally and you stick to the budget and you're professional and you get it done and you're in and out and you're, you're a pro and you actually do the things that you say you're going to do, you will dominate your market. Because home services right now, I, I mean, I think this is probably prevalent across the board, but the majority of that industry, at least here in, in Virginia, is filled with trash. Absolute trash. People, they don't show up, you know, when they're supposed to for estimates. They don't show up when they're supposed to to get the job done. No job is ever coming in close to, to budget or time frame. And this isn't one or two people. I mean, this is this this is nonstop, I hear from people. And, you know, if they even show up at all. I mean, hell. Well, car business. Car business has been crazy the last couple of years. <laughs> Devin and I, unfortunately, you know, we've had a couple of accidents this year, some totaled vehicles. And so we've had to be in this market and we had a lease up. So I had to replace another vehicle. And then Devin and Kiki were in a wreck a couple of weeks ago. And now we're having to replace her vehicle. And we were just bouncing around looking at some stuff yesterday. As a matter of fact, not a single person walked up to me on the lot. Not a single person came out to help us to see if we needed anything. And I'm like, we're, we're going to buy a car. Now, in fairness, in fairness, I already knew it was going to go one of two ways. If we we're going to buy a certain brand of car, I was going to be with my guy, Roger. He was going to help me out. And if I'm going to buy another style of car or a lot of different styles of cars, I'm going to hit up my, my boy, Scott Simons with CMA, who I don't care where you are in the country, quick promo, Scott Simons is your guy. No matter where you are in the country, no matter what you're looking for, hit me up. Scott Simons will get you what you need. He'll get it delivered nationwide. He is a bad, bad man. And we actually need to get him on this show because he is one of the greatest I've ever met in my life. He's just a great, great human being, a great friend. I love the dude. And that's who we're, we're going to buy the car from. But here's the thing. I'm on these sites local. Scott's a couple hours away from me. So we're just trying to put our hands on a couple cars and, and see if we like how they feel, how they look, what's going on. But not a single individual came out, son, to ask us if we needed help. And I was like, damn, 
I guess I'm out here looking like some of these area codes we don't necessarily want to answer the phone from because they never buy. I think that's, maybe, I'm not, maybe I'm not representing what winning looks like on this lot right now and nobody's interested in talking to me. But that, you know that's probably not the case. But I'm like, if, if I'm in a commission-based business, I got to move product to put money on uh, in my bank and food on my family's table. I see somebody on this lot that's empty. There is nobody else out there and it's full of cars. Man, just somebody stand the hell up, walk out and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. How can I help you? And I'm going to tell you exactly what I want. Because everybody buying a damn car knows what they want. They know the features because everything's online. Everything's online. So if I'm on your lot, I already know what I want. Now I need to find out if I actually like it. What I think I want on paper, when I actually physically am in front of it, is that what I want? But man, you got to hustle. But these dudes just sitting back and women, they not a single person, not a single person came out and, and, and spoke to us. I had to go inside. So I go inside. Someone's excited to help us. We get to do what we need to do. And I send a text message last night to my buddy, Scott. And I said, hey, man, this is what I'm thinking we're going to do. This is what we're looking for. He connected me with the general manager of his Volkswagen store. And the guy's like, bet, this is what we got. Let me know, you know what specs you want. I said the specs. This morning, the deal done. They've sent us the stuff. The numbers are going to hold the car. We'll let insurance take its piece, you know, that it needs to settle out for the car that was totaled. And we're going to pick up this car. It was three text messages and it's done. It was done because I know who they are. I know what they do. The brand is there. The brand is built. They're stepping onto the lot, responding to me as soon as they know I'm on there. And me being the lot for them was a text message, an immediate response. Seven, eight o'clock at night last night. Yesterday, I'm physically on site and I can't get anybody to help me. But we got the car that we're buying and we're getting it from our man, Scott. That's service. That's what you do. But here's the thing. How Scott and his team approaches the car industry and attacks and dominates that industry is different than it was three years ago, is different than it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It has to. And they're like the model of adapting and overcoming to get it done. Because when they started, they had a dream of what they wanted to do and what they wanted to accomplish. And they did certain things and they've learned to adapt as they've gone on. So when you started your business, you had a dream, you had a vision of what it would look like. Well, now it's it's getting really hard. It's getting really, really hard. And I want to challenge you, don't quit on it. Don't quit on it. Just because you're going backwards doesn't mean that you won't go forward again. You know, just because you don't have, you're short on money right now, it doesn't mean that you can't get money again. At some point you didn't have money before and you built your business, you had success and now it's a different time and it's slower and it's tougher and it's whatever. Don't close the doors. Don't hang it up. What do you need to do to keep going if this is your Because here's the thing, I believe God's not going to put on you a vision that isn't going to come to fruition, right? Like that, that's not how, that's not how it works. I don't, I don't just believe that's not how it works. I know that's not how it works. But, but the thing is you have the vision, it will come to fruition, but you have to work for it. And just because, oh gosh, I heard something the other day, just because you're delayed doesn't mean you're denied, right? And it, okay, it's not working in the time frame that you want. Okay, that's fine. But maybe what's happening right now is preparing you for that next step. The struggles, if you're going to be blessed with a lot, you're going to suffer a lot. You're going to suffer a lot because you have to show I'm worthy of it. I'm deserving of it. Give me the burden. Give me the responsibility. Give me the trials. Give me the pain. Give me the headaches. Give me the tears. Give me the blood. Give me the injuries. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And not only am I here for it, I'm going to receive all these things and I'm going to keep going because I have faith in what it is I'm doing. I have faith in the vision that was put on me years ago as to what I'm supposed to accomplish. And I'm talking to you right now. And you're hearing this and you're struggling. Your business is slower than it usually is. Maybe your finances aren't how they want to be. Maybe your health isn't where it wants to be. Maybe your marriage is not where it wants to be, where you want it to be. And maybe all these things are stemming from stress from the business. Or is stuff going sideways in your relationship and that's causing stress and distraction and bullshit and now your business is suffering. You got to attack whatever is causing the issues and whatever is causing the damage. Get that shit under control before it starts tearing up everything else. 
For me, it's always work. My wife's not a stressor to me. My wife's an angel. My kids aren't stressors to me. They're amazing. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. But guess what? Neither is their dad, right? And so, but it's like, they're not stressors to me. The stress I feel for my kids is of worry, is is of, and not worry of like, are they going to make good decisions? Are they going to do the right things? No, I'm confident. I have faith in how my wife and I raise them that they are going to do the right things. Are they going to screw shit up? 100%. Are they going to make mistakes? Are they going to do things that, you know, down the road, they're going to wish they hadn't done? Yep. A hundred percent. That is life. That is living. That is being a human. That is being a teenager. And the thing is like with our kids, at least right now, I feel like they talk to us about a lot of stuff. I mean, you feel like you can talk to us about whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, I'm not going to, you come with me the craziest thing. You think I'm going to knock you out? You think I'm going to help you fix it? Probably fix it. Yeah. And then we'll talk about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and we're going to figure it out. And it's like, I, I've always said, I don't care if you, if you're in a bad situation, whatever's going on, like you got to call, but you can't let these, these stressors, whatever they are, overwhelm you and fuck up life. And I mean, I know so many people at the most irrational, small things, they will let consume and dominate their life. And it's paralyzing. Man, what are you missing out on? What goodness are you missing out on? Because you're paralyzed by what if? What if? What if it doesn't work out? What if I look foolish? What if I fail? What if people don't like my haircut? What if people don't like the shoes I wear? What if people don't like the car I drive? What if people don't like the way my beard is trimmed? What if people don't like that my beard is gray? Maybe I should just for a minute and darken it. What if What if I forget to wear my hat and my bald spot is evidence? Oh my gosh, I look like such an idiot out here. What if my kids make a bad decision and they go to that birthday party and they have a beer? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Okay, what if? What if they don't? What if they lean into the stuff you taught them and they don't do stupid shit, but they're gonna do some stupid shit? What if no one actually gives a shit the shoes you're wearing? What if no one gives a damn about your hair or your beard? What if no one's paying attention to you anyway? What if you are not as important as you, as you think you are? <laughs> what if your biggest concern in why you're not taking action on a dream? What if the, the single f- reason that you're not taking action is why you're miserable and why you're stressed and why you're depressed? What if it did work out? What if it did change your life? What if it did improve your health? What if it did make your relationships better? What if it did change your life financially? What if it did change the, what if it had generational impact on your family? What if it had generational impact on the world? And you're worried about what, what if it doesn't work? What if it did? What if it did? What if I quit? What would I do? Well, how about what if you figure it out and fix it and stay driven? Because if you were passionate 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, and you had a vision of what your life was going to look like. Now, now things change, guys. Like, don't take this as black and white, right? Like, it's in the gray. Things change. If you'd asked me 10 years ago, Josh, what's life going to be, you know, when things slow down? One, I don't think ever ever anything's going to slow down. Two, I'd have said it's going to be me, Devin Ray, on a farm outside of Charlottesville, looking at mountains, laying in fields, staring at the sky, watching some horses and cows walk around and, you know, at some point grandbabies and all that stuff. That was it. That was, and that's a lot. And that's a beautiful thing to me. To me, that's a beautiful thing. That's always been the vision. However, there have been changes to that vision. In my mind, the vision is property, is Devin and I and views and grandbabies and my family and and my mom and Mamu and all these things. And, <laughs> you know, the, the vision is still there. I don't know that it's Charlottesville anymore. 
there's so much out there. There's so much world to see. There's so much America to see in beautiful places. And, and I don't know if, if that's, if that's it. And here's the thing, I'm not ditching out on a vision. The vision changes as you grow, as you mature, as you develop, you've got to know it's like, Hey, like, all right, I'm still on track. We're still going towards the right thing. But those details may look a little different. And a lot of people get hung up on, okay, that's the destination. A quarter mile, I got to make a left. And then in three miles, I'll make a right and I'm going to head north. In the 45 miles, we're going to make a slight right. We're going to be going northeast and we're going to be blah, blah, Like they have to know every step along the way. Whereas me, I feel very good about that destination. And I know, I don't need necessarily need to know three steps ahead because I have faith in the vision that was put on my heart and on my mind that, hey, I'm going to understand. I'm, what the, the step I'm in right now is preparing me for the step I got to take tomorrow. And that's preparing me for the step I got to take the next day. And all these steps, I don't need to know four, five, six steps from now. I have faith what I, my step I'm in right now is preparing me for that next one. So right now, guys, you're struggling and you're hurting and there's pain. Like, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to give up. I'm going to close the doors. I'm moving on to something different. I'm just going to go back, get a regular job, do it. Man, hey, look, and that's fine. Go for it. I challenge you, though. Are you really done? Are you really done? Think about how hard it was when you started. Because what happens when it's six months from now and you're like, I screwed up. And now you got to start over. You've been out of the game for six months. You're starting completely over. The people that didn't quit are still in it fighting and they're grinding and you're further behind. Maybe you just need to mix it up. Maybe you just have to make some changes. Don't quit though. Don't quit on your dream. Don't quit on the vision because there's nobody else who can do it. There's nobody else who can fulfill that. Well, people joke me. People make fun of me. They say I'm not cut out for it. People say you're different. You're off. Yeah, I'm different. I'm different. My vision's my vision. My dream is my dream. I'm me. I do what I do. Nobody else can do it. There is no other me. There will never be another Josh Wilson like me. But there'll never be another you either. I'm not saying that like I'm just the freaking model whatever. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying it's your vision. There's not going to be another you. If you don't do it, who will? There might be another variation of it. Well, Josh, there's a million people that that are in my industry that do what I do. No, they don't. No, they don't. They're in the same industry, but they don't do what you do because you're unique. So what happens? What's the effect of you not being the one to do it? What's the effect of you not being ready for that opportunity when it comes? Because you missed your moment because you quit and gave up too early. You miss the moment because you quit. The moment for a vision that was put into you, for a dream that you have of a life that you can build for yourself and your family and a legacy that you can leave, but you miss the moment because the timing didn't come when you wanted it to. (laughs) I said it earlier, delayed doesn't mean you're denied. It's delayed. Your ass needs to be patient. And that's hard. I'm aggressively patient. (laughs) Like, Like I can, I've learned to be patient. I've learned to be patient in my own way. But I'm very aggressive with it. And I'm gonna push. And I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna challenge my teams. I'm gonna take risks. The only thing you can assure that you control timing of anything is if you quit. If you quit, you will know the moment that it ended. You will know for a fact the moment to the second when everything you've dreamed for and believed in and had faith in to that point of you quitting ended. You cannot control the timing of things except for when you quit. Because when you quit, it's done. It's dead. So stop trying. Don't wait, though. You have to take action. You can't just sit back and wait 
for things to fall in line and take place so that you can propel and your business will grow because that shit ain't going to happen. God gave you that vision. God gave you the belief. You've got to have the faith. And part of that faith is taking action and knowing that you have no control over the time. Action is the work. Action and faith is dealing with all the bullshit and still moving forward. Delayed, not denied. Going backwards for a minute doesn't mean that you can't go forward again. Don't quit. Stay on it. Do the work. Stay focused on your faith. Believe in yourself. I don't care if nobody else does. I don't care if people are telling you you're crazy. They're not you. They're not you. And you're not them. But when you start doubting yourself, when you start losing faith in the vision that only you can see, you got to check yourself. You got to get yourself out of that. I want you to fight. I want you to win. You're in my industry. You're in other industries. You're a freelancer. You're independent. You're just getting started. You're a, a longtime business that's just going through it right now because things are tough. I want you to win. I want you to win. If you're a good person, you got good character, you take care of people, you look out for people. If you're in my business, you're good to the dogs, you care about the dogs. It's all about the dogs and the health and well being and the development of people who are under you. If you're that part, I want you to win. If you're not, oh, I want you to fall out. I want you to fail so badly. I don't need you to fail for me to win. I just don't want you in the industry dealing with any dogs. <laughs> so I could really give two shits about you. I care about the dogs. But if you're not that person, God, I want you to win. I want you to win big. Because you're supposed to impact someone. You're supposed to change somebody's life. You're supposed to impact a family. Supposed to impact hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of dogs. If you quit, who do you impact? No one down the road. They'll eat at you. Do not quit. Fight. Just keep swinging. The more pain you endure, the more you suffer, the greater the reward is going to be. That's how it works. That's how it works. And when you feel like it's the heaviest, that's because you can carry it. You can carry it. You're the one. You're just delayed. You're not denied. I appreciate you guys so much. Let us know what you think. Share this with someone you feel like needs to hear it. And we're going to catch you next time in the studio. Love you, son. Love you. All right. 